Yeah, one, one of the things I always say is, you know, building something complex is pretty easy. Building something <laughs> simple is very hard. Yeah, you know, simplifying like if if you're if you if you are you know responsible for insurance claims at your company and you got to develop a process for how we're going to do it, building this complex process is pretty easy, right? <laughs> but but saying wait, I want to simplify this so anybody can come in and work in the back end of my business and and I can I can use this as a rotating job and bring you know young people in and then they can step up. That's actually much harder. It, you have to put mm -hmm. a lot more thought into it. You have to put more governance into it. You got to put more um, guardrails. And it's like, wow, this is really hard. Insurance dudes are on a mission to escape being handcuffed by our agencies. How? By uncovering the secrets to creating a predictable, consistent, and profitable agency sales machine. I am Craig Pretzinger. I am Jason Feldman. We are agents. We are insurance dudes. Think of the top salesperson in the organization, right? They fail yeah. more than anybody. Yeah, they'll, they'll tell you, oh, yeah, you know, I closed 10 deals. I, I pursued 100. Right. And I closed exactly. 10. And then there's somebody else that's like, wow, I only pursued 20. And you wonder why, you know, you only did 20% of it. The third. Yeah. You, know, you know, Michael Jordan talks about, you know, I hit X number of game winners, but here's how many I took. But those are people that got to, to, to greatness. But, you know, like, like if, if the three of us said, hey, let's go skiing for a weekend. And we all said, hey, let's really push ourselves. I want to be a better skier. Well, if I never push myself, never fall, never go down a black diamond because I just don't want to fall and I don't, then I'm probably not really getting better. Right. Right. Which is, by the way, if I say I don't want to be better, that's fine. But if I say, no, I actually want to become an expert skier. I want to become... Um, I want to be able to be as good as my kids now as they're getting older. Well, then you, you're going to have to sign up for, I might, you know, probably going to fall a couple of times today. I'm going to try to, to, to do, to do better. I'm going to go on some tougher, I'm going to challenge myself a little bit more, but you know, sometimes we're just protective of ourselves, but you know, in companies, you know, I look to leaders and say, are you creating a culture that allows, um, failure? And if you are and, and, and you talk about it, then you start to pull away fear. And I will tell you, if you're able to do that, you will grow faster because employees have so many unbelievable ideas, like just crazy good ideas, but they won't bring them forward if the feeling is, if it works, it's great. And if it's not, I could, I could lose my job. I could get in trouble. Um, that's going to take me off the promotion list. Uh, wh whatever, then you know, you're going to have a big percent not bring those ideas forward. A lot of businesses are a fear-based organization, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That is not healthy. No, it, it, it's not. And what it does is it, it breeds it then. Mm. You know, and then next thing you know, you'll hear things like, yeah, you know, we tried that a few years ago. I wouldn't sure. even bring it up. That okay. Well, yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you tried it a few years ago, well, you know, well, let's take the business I'm in. Well, we tried that a few years ago. Well, if you tried telematics 10 years ago, it probably didn't work. If you tried electric fleets five years ago, there weren't as many chargers. So, but if mm. you said, we're, we're just not going to try this electrification thing. We tried it before it didn't work. Well, right. in 10 years, 10 years are going to be left behind. You know, yeah. it's like, it, it's like Blockbuster not thinking streaming was going to catch yeah, on. Insane, right? <laughs> like, how do they not catch that? Like, and then they did I, I saw, eventually, right? Yeah, a little late. Yeah, but way I saw, late. I saw the like I saw this meme, and it was a it was a guy um, in a very like one of the first cars, like a Model T or Model A or whatever it was, and he's on there. And then there's a guy look like looking up at him, pointing, and he says, "Yeah, but where are you gonna go and fill that thing up with gas? You can't do it like with a horse, where you can just stop and, and let the horse eat. You know, I almost spilled my water. Yeah, but uh." Yeah, yeah it's, you know, it's funny. It's like you got to just be ahead of it. Yeah, you know, I mean, just you know, let's think back. I don't know, thirty years ago when there wasn't email. You know, yeah. you know, you know. In our, uh, we used to have. Um, I know, time. I know, I know. Some of your listeners don't know this, but we had little floppy drives and little three and a half inch drives, and we saved our stuff on that. And we walked around. You know, here's an iPhone that has more storage on probably any computer I had till what two thousand. Right. Probably like more than the whole office building all put together. You know, it's crazy. But but if you had this mental model of, hey, well, that's not going to work because you, you weren't staying up with 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 technology. Technology is a great disruptor in, in our society. 
you know, an, an enabler that allows us to do things, then, you know, then business is going to pass you by, you know, yep. other companies are going to, are going to pass you by. So, yeah. so you have people that are raised in this environment where they're, where they're indoctrinated into, into self-doubt They're they go to work in a fear-based place. Like, how do you break them? Like you're the leader. Now it's your role to break that cycle. Yeah. You know, it, it really starts with just changing your mindset. And, and, you know, again, I go back to that saying, have the courage to fail, faith to succeed. It's, it's, you know, finding, you know, where are you comfortable? Everyone has some space in their life where they are very comfortable. Um, you know, for, for, for somebody it could be video gaming. It's like, Hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a risk taker when I'm video gaming for another person. It could be a casino. Like, Oh, all of a sudden they're this button down person in the office and they never take a risk. They go to a casino and they, they take a risk. You know, another person it could be a hobby, you know, they're, they're buttoned down at the office. They don't take risks and they're a skydiver. So it's like, everyone's got it in them. It's how do you bring that person out? How do you bring that person out to more dimensions of your, of your life? And, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's where it's, it's finding that fearlessness inside all of us. We all have it. We were born with it. It's just channeling it. And sometimes if you're in an organization that really is fear-based, sometimes the answer is, you know, I probably need to go someplace else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that, that's okay. That's okay to say, if I want to get to where I want to go, if I want to, um, you know, be in a more open-minded, this isn't going to work here. That is perfectly okay. How about the alter the other side? You're the leader. They come and work at you. You have the right place, but now this person has really been beat down because of the way that it works. How do you help them? Yeah, that's where you know you know patiently coaching them up, mentoring them, leading them. Um, you know, giving examples like tangible examples of program of other companies where it's worked. Uh, what I love now is so many uh, colleges and universities have these things called like micro credentials. You can go online, $500, $800. Um, sometimes it's even less. Sometimes it's freeware uh, where you can, take a, you can take a program on design thinking. You can take one on innovative thinking. And, and by the way, I've, I've, I've done a, a number of these. And what I find at the end of them when they're done well is that was pretty simple stuff. That wasn't rocket science. Like, and you sit there and go, wait, I, I just did that for six hours. And the only things I got, I took away were A, B, and C. But what, if you step back, don't be disappointed that they only taught you three things. What you should realize is I only have to do these three things to be more innovative. I only have to do these three things to communicate better or, or, you know, whatever you happen to be, to be focused on. And, and, you know, I, I try to take one of those every year and I try to move it around. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I took one on innovation and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, 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 it, I think we all think of the big innovations. We think of the Teslas of the world, the <laughs> Apple uh, iPods of the world. And sure, those are big innovations and those get the headlines. But I mean, there's literally innovations around every single corner. Like if you opened up your pantry, there's innovations in food. If you opened up uh, your garage, there's innovations in your garage door opener and how it works. And, you know, hey, how can I get this on an app now? Um, wireless technology, they're everywhere. You just have to say, where am I going to, where am I going to bring my, my innovative self, my fearless self out to play? And how am I going to make my mark on the world? Yeah. And it's funny too. Cause like, I think when you're young, you, you get taught about invention a lot. So everybody's trying to come up with like the new idea, the new thing where it's like innovation is really where things happen. Like, like most of, like even the automobile was like a, was an innovation in a sense where, it, you know, it took multiple, you know, the gas steam engine and like put it with wheels. Yeah. And then like, it wasn't, it was more and even Ford Ford. I mean, the cars were around. He just came out with a way that, Hey, we can actually make these mass produce them. So it's like innovations really where it's at. And it's just taking a couple common ideas sticking them together and presenting it. Yeah. And I, I think that like, I love what you said about the simplicity factor too. Cause I love what um, uh, Leonardo uh, da Vinci said, where like simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And it truly is like, even in my life in the last year, it, Craig can attest to this too. Like, like a lot of the stuff that I'm we were doing, speak it any, I'm not going <laughs> to support you in any way <laughs> in our business and stuff like that. It just got real complex. 
And when you're you're in a complex state, it's really hard to be um, to have any kind of creativity. It's kind of hard to to have any kind of like growth within that and really peeling it away, going down to simplicity makes things easy. I mean, it makes you be able to explore, like to your point, if you did the class, you learned three different things. I mean, the three things are going to have uh, you're going to have you know, thousands of thoughts about those three things and really be able to grow on them. Where if it was a thousand things, you'd forget most of them. And yeah, one, one of the things I always say is, you know, building something complex is pretty easy. Building something <laughs> simple is very hard. Yes. You know, simplifying, like if, you, if you're, if you, if you are, you know, responsible for insurance claims at your company and you got to develop a process for how we're going to do it, building this complex process is pretty easy. Right. But, but saying, wait, I want to simplify this so anybody can come in and work in the back end of my business. And, and I can, I can use this as a rotating job and bring, you know, young people in and then they can step up. That's actually much harder. It, you have to put mm -hmm. a lot more thought into it. You have to put more governance into it. You got to put more um, guardrails and it's like, wow, this is really hard, but just having it be leaving it complex is, is easy. And, and, and I think that's where, you know, I look at people who have had repeatable success, you know, in different industries, repeatable success over a long period of time. Generally speaking, they've been pretty iterative. They've been willing to change. Um, they've been innovative. But if you go, if you say to them, what makes you great? They're going to tell you some like, hey, I do these, I, you know, Kobe Bryant, you know, I get up early, I go to the gym, I outwork my competition. You know, it's like, you're like, that's the secret. Yeah, he would tell you, yes, it is. It yeah. is. And you're, you're, you, you think it's, you know, some elaborate plan he's got and it, it's not, it's, it's right. just a it's few activity. simple things done well. <laughs> activity and consistency, right? Yeah. Yeah. Consistency is another big part. You know, we talk yeah. about simplicity, you know, you, you then you need consistency with it. And you, you talked about, you know, Ford, that's what he brought with the assembly line. The assembly line, you know, made the vehicle easier to produce faster produce, less expensive produce, but a consistent product because mm. people were doing repetitive things, which allowed them to become more, as it was simpler, it allowed them to become more consistent and perform at a higher level. Yep. Gosh. And I want to bring this back full circle. So with that concept of simplicity and, and uh, in leadership, and you've had a successful career of not only your, your life or your, uh, your jobs, but also like your life, you, kids, you're still married. Um, what has been the uh, part of the 1%? What has allowed <laughs> all of that to work, especially with the ambitious uh, career that you've had? Yeah. What I tell you is I, uh, I, I, when I was, I can tell you, I was 28 years old. I got given an executive coach and the executive coach sat me down and said, Brennan, you know, I, I got this 360 report on you. And here's what I can tell you. He tells me all these things. And he said, you know, we really need to work on your EQ. And at the time, I was like, you know, what's EQ? And he said, emotional intelligence. And he said, you know, it appears that you, you've got the IQ to get where you want to go. It appears you've got the drive and you're personable. And I'm sitting there 28 thinking like, hey, this guy's nailing it. I'm, I'm the man. And then all of, a sudden he hits me, all of a sudden he hits me with, I don't see you having a great career until you can in, in conquer EQ. Because the difference between where you're at and where you want to go is, is, you know, um, you know, like I was a very aggressive leader, like, Hey, we're going to go take the hill, you know? And it was like, take the hill at no, whatever cost. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I was more focused on my team's goals than maybe the company's goals at the time, you know, just different things that come with a little bit of, of, of youth and ambition. And, and I can tell you, I think what's helped me over the last say 20 years is, is EQ realizing that, you know, Hey, what happens today isn't going to define me. Um, today's failure isn't going to define me. Today's success isn't going to define me either. You know, and I think mm. we've had people that had a big success in their career and, you know, they became all that and they, they read their plus press clippings and maybe got, you know, a big head and stuff. And, you know, and, and as you're raising kids, you realize your kids, are, your, your kids are going to have wins and losses and, and successes and failures. And how do you build them so that they're theirs? Because as a parent, and I saw it, I, I coached foot, uh, sports for 10 years. I saw all these parents that really wanted to, you know, come take their kids challenges on. It's like, wait, what your kids advocate for themselves. There's nothing right. stronger than somebody advocating. But so for me, 
I would tell you that, you know, I, I really, I, I've said this a thousand, I wish I had that executive coach's name so I could write him a thank you once a year, but somebody catching me at a young age saying, you know, you've got all the IQ, you got all the potential, right? As a lot of people do, but you got to work on your EQ if you really want to like endure yeah. for the long term. And as a parent, man, it's way more EQ than IQ. Right. Um, it's just yeah. way more EQ. Like we, we all have the IQ to, to, you know, tell the kids what's right and wrong, but yeah. we have the EQ to like help them uh, navigate situations that like you didn't know you're going to have to navigate. Um, and, you know, and when do you let something slide and go, I'm not going to get on them for everything, you know, right. and when, when do you not? And to me, that's not, that's not IQ that, 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 that that's EQ. And so I, I think, um, you know, it's uh, if you want to have a, a, a long, successful career, if a, a, a good marriage, a good parent, good community person, you know, having that balance. And I think uh, EQ really, really, uh, at least for me, has been something I've worked at. And I say worked at is that you never stop working on it because mm, it's a practice. Like, it is like, you know, like, again, I mentioned earlier, social media has brought in a whole new uh, revelation of of, you know, well, how do you handle that? How do you handle like? not being invited. All your friends are at a party and you're sitting there going, well, it looks like they're having fun, you know? And you go, Hey, no problem. Or a funeral. Yeah. You know, just how do you, how do you handle all that? And I think EQ is the, is a, is a great differentiator if you have high aspirations. Yeah. hundred like percent. I'd, I'd love to piggyback off that uh, too, with identity. So you talked about like having the successes and the non-successes and, and you know, like how have you f- dealt with that? throughout your career is be, you, you know, your identity as being a leader, as being a CEO, and then your identity is be- coming home and, and being the father that's supposed, you know, having that EQ and be able to withhold because there's like two, I, I I feel like it's two different roles, right? When you're at work, you're on it. And when you're like at home, you, you got to listen, like the, the more you can shut up and just listen to everybody in the household, like yeah. the better job you do, you know? Yeah, I, I got to tell you, you know, I, I think I learned more about I, I've learned more about my kids dr- uh, driving them to sports when they've got their kids in the, when they got their friends in the car <laughs> than anything. Like, yeah. I love driving because yeah. like sometimes I'd be like they're in the back seat, you know, you're driving down the road. And you're like, they have they have no real idea that I'm actually in this vehicle with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they're, and they're certainly about, you're not listening. Right. Like, no, it's, 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 they're talking about their coach. You're talking about their school. They're talking about what they're going to do, what they're not going to do. And and I just think those are precious moments. Like if you take yeah. it in, if you take it's it in, like, and by the way, don't participate. Right. Just take it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's like fly on the wall. You get to see the real stuff. Right. Like. Yeah seeing them interact with their friends, like little humans when, and, you know, especially like teens, when they start saying they're like insightful stuff and the way they behave is so interesting. Yeah. Cause it's different, right? It's, you don't see that when you're nah. just with them. Nope. It's nope. pretty, it's pretty interesting. So for those of you with young kids, including Jason, like more of that, it's, it's it is pretty fascinating. Like as they, as they get older. Yeah. Pretty and, cool. they, and, 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 and this is everyone listening knows this, but, and they get older quick. Yeah, get older quick. It's it's uh, just you know it you know it's 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 uh, cherish like every moment you have with them, and yeah, it's something. No matter how big your job, no matter how busy you are, you're never too busy for your family. You're yeah. just never never too busy for your family. So, just make that decision. My son Kenzo is taking a gap year. He's in a van driving around the country doing climbing, like climbing. You know, yeah. doing mountain climbing. Yeah, and so um, we're by ourselves now. It's freaking weird. <laughs> two of the two of the animals died like we have one dog and and my wife and i and it's just bizarre you know it's like so quiet yep. at the house so i mean you, you know the same thing so and now she gets to be annoyed with you because you're around all the time well see the thing is she does but then she tells me to go away and then i can do what i want so right <laughs> so it all works out well we didn't even we didn't talk too much on on the fud so before we wrap up why don't you talk about the fud factor just give us Give us that that in the details and the juiciness on that. Yeah, so, so what I'd say it's really written for anybody. You know, I've got lots of stories in there from um, from a high school kid that wanted to play Division One lacrosse, got recruited to play at Rutgers, and tells his story to uh, to Zach Brown at McLaren Racing, who talks about how he wow. came in when McLaren was at ninth and and you know the worst they had been in McLaren's history, bringing them up to fourth. 
and then tons of stories in between of just, uh, you know, common people that overcame their fears or overcame organizational fears and, 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 and got that, got their themselves, their, their friends, their company to, uh, to a different level. Um, and then through there, I, I give very, I believe is very pragmatic, practical advice of how to do it. And, you know, I have a few stories in there on myself, but I try to bring stories just that people can relate to again, from a, from a young lacrosse player to, you know, the CEO of an iconic company. And uh, it, it's, it's a short read. It's, it's pretty easy read. And, um, and it's, uh, it's really meant, it's not targeted at one particular uh, age group or audience or level. It, it's, uh, you know, it was harder to write that way, but really targeted for, you know, an 18 year old or a 50 year old, you know, somebody wants to be better, somebody who's maybe stuck saying like, what do I, how do I get past this? And somebody that just um, really is an emerging leader as well. Like, okay, I'm an emerging leader. I know I got to learn some things. What, you know, what do I do? So pretty simple, straightforward, and then uh, hopefully a fun read as well. Awesome. Love, Love it. it. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, we'll, we'll throw the link in the show notes. Uh, so hopefully that'll get some people over there grabbing that book. You can get it. There's a hardcover. There's a Kindle version and you can do it. Jason. Audio book. book. I, I love it. it. Uh, did, you read it? did you read it? Did I read it? Yeah. Did you read the, I mean, was no, it is for the audio? Version. Version? Oh, oh no, I did not. No, I did not. Sorry, I, I know you I read the book yeah. because you wrote. Yeah. The book. <laughs> I, was, I, was, yeah, I was like, that's a weird You're question. Like, that's he, okay. I, I didn't realize he was this unintelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Well, perfect. Hey, thank you so much, Brendan, Brendan, for coming on the show. It was awesome. A uh, little, little technical stuff at the beginning, but I'm glad that it worked out and it was awesome, man. All right. Hey, you guys are great. Thanks for doing this. And, and, uh, you know, I, I enjoy your audience and I enjoy your show. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thanks, Appreciate Brendan. it.